Und zwar hat der gute äh, Daniel Morat sich ja ein neues äh, Setup gebaut. Und ähm, das würde ich gerne mal sehen, was da gemacht wurde, gebaut wurde und wie das jetzt aussieht. Weil der hat nämlich äh, einen Rig, was ich eigentlich gerne haben möchte. Und ich habe äh, mich da mal erkundigt. Man kann das Ding auch äh, importieren lassen oder sich schicken lassen aus Kanada. Und äh, vielleicht wird es ja jetzt gleich noch ein bisschen schmackhafter, dass ich irgendwann sage, ja, okay, wir ordnen das mal. Also lasst uns da mal. Wir gucken mal, was der neue Raum, das neue Rig so zu bieten hat. Die Buttonbox finde ich ja jetzt schon sexy. Das ist die von Precision Sim Engineering. I thought I had the most insane Sim Rig, but this one takes it to a whole new level. Boah, das ist so clean. Das ist so unglaublich clean. Uh. With sim racing, my number one focus is always to dial my rig in as close to the real car as possible because that's what I'm using this for primarily is to train for my real races. With all the new hardware available in 2023, I thought this is a perfect time to build a new rig. So called up advanced sim racing between SimiCube, Precision Sim Engineering, SimCore and D-Box. We put uh, a list of equipment together and we built literally my ultimate dream simulator rig. And it all starts with the chassis. Das hätte ich auch so gerne, das Chassis. This is the new ASR Pro Chassis. The difference between this and other chassis, even though it's extruded aluminum, which is a pretty common frame or chassis for sim racing, this is surprisingly way better than anything I've ever driven because the metal, the aluminum is so dense. The reason why that's important is the thicker the metal, the less flex you have, the less creaks and cracks you'll have while driving. It's important for me when I'm driving to feel everything, every little bit of detail from the steering wheel, from the pedals, from the seat. I don't want to have any additional oh, das ist so clean. Das ist der Wahnsinn, wie clean das ist. Movement or motion from my chassis. It's supposed to be rigid just like my race car and there there's literally no better chassis manufacturer than Advanced Sim Racing with the ASR Pro. What's so cool about this is it's different than their other lineup of, of chassis. You have the, uh, the extruded aluminum that has a flat profile on the side. And why I love that is because now I can do things that are a bit more creative and show my creativity. I can put designs, car designs, my eSports livery on this actual chassis. And for me, like I'm, I mean, you can probably tell by the studio, It's uh, it's so important the aesthetic and having everything look beautiful. I mean, for some it doesn't really matter. You might have uh, cables flying around or things out of place, but I'm so particular when when things are dialed in and they look good. I feel. Das ist der einzige Vorteil übrigens, wenn der Computer hinter den Monitoren ist, dass du diese ganzen Kabel kannst du einfach in so du brauchst halt diese ganze Überlänge einfach nicht. Show my creativity und zeig Werbepartner. Ja, das. Ne, du weißt ja, wie es ist. Man muss es ja auch verkaufen. Feel good and I feel fast in the rig. The adjustability on the ASR Pro is incredible. That's probably one of the things I love the most about it is jo. ergonomically I can get the steering wheel in the correct position and it's so easy to adjust. You just basically loosen off two, two screws and the entire wheel system, the wheel motor slides forward or backwards. You can also slide it up and down super easy with just Two, two screws. Das finde ich so geil und ich würde das selber so gerne haben, weil wenn du zum Beispiel runde Lenkräder hast, die sind zu hoch. Äh, wenn du GT-Wheels fährst, hast du die ja so äh, gerade unter dem Kinn und wenn du die anderen hast, sind sie dir an den Stirn. Und deswegen finde ich dieses Rig so unfassbar geil. Ich wünschte mir, dass in Europa das mal irgendjemand machen würde, dass du diese Dinger einfach, äh, dass das ein Standard wird, dass man das verschieben kann. Das ist natürlich teuer, darüber müssen wir nicht sprechen, aber das sollte Standard werden, dass irgendjemand sowas noch mal entwickelt in Europa. The pedal deck's also been upgraded. You have an insane amount of adjustability. Ergonomically, I can get the pedals exactly in the same position as my real race car. So that's a huge point for me. So ergonomics, it's a 10 out of 10 with this new chassis and aesthetics, just gorgeous. The next new piece of equipment I got on the rig is the SimuCube 2 Ultimate wheelbase. And I previously had the SimuCube 2 Pro. And for most, that's pretty much the end game when it comes to wheelbases. It's the best value bang for buck for uh, wheelbase. It does everything you would ever want it to do, has 
you know, a, enough force feedback with 25 Newton meters. You have the software, you can tune it. But I just had to try the SimuCube Ultimate. I mean, the SimuCube 2 Ultimate is next level when it comes to smoothness, um, texture, detail, layering. I sound like I'm assessing a wine bottle right now, but it's just insane. Like I couldn't believe how much more detail there actually is in the wheelbase. I didn't think it was possible. It's one of those things where once you actually put your hands on it, you can immediately tell the difference. Uh, so for, for me, I'm always trying to get the ultimate driving experience and connection man sieht, dass er äh, Real-Life-Rennfahrer ist, weil alles mit seinem Zeug beklebt ist. Wirklich, alles ist beklebt. Alles. One to one with my race car and it says it right in the name. It's a Simicube 2 Ultimate. It's uh, it's so good. And now, whenever I have these big slides and counter steers, I always just yell out, Simicube Ultimate save. Another new piece of equipment that we bolted on the rig are the Simicube Active Pedals. Although I've already had the SimiCube Active Pedals on my rig for probably around half a year to three quarters of a year now, these are the actual production units. They're the final product, like what you guys will have at home. And there's been some huge refinements in how smooth they are, the, the feedback, the software. Uh, I've worked really hard with the team at SimiCube to, to make these what they are right now. And um, yeah, they're just incredible. Why they're on my rig and why they're so important for me is number one i mean they're just so precise just throw everything out precision alone they're worth it but then you throw in the fact that you can customize them to feed das wird übrigens mein nächstes if mein persönliches nächstes upgrade mein rig kommt weg und dann wird das einmal so nach meinen aktuellen vorstellungen gemacht das weiß ich jetzt schon weil mein ähm, mein meine pedalauflage gefällt mir äh, nicht zwingend also sie äh, erfüllt ihren Zweck, äh, aber sie ist halt einfach nicht vernünftig oder sagen wir mal einfach ordentlich einstellbar, ohne 80.000 Schrauben äh, lose zu schrauben. Das wird für mich auch nochmal irgendwann so ein Ding, wo das ganze Rig einfach mal aufgeräumt wird und alles einen vernünftigen Platz kriegt. Feel however you want with just a few clicks of a button. Plus you have the ABS effect, which all the cars I drive, the GT3 and GT4 Mercedes in real life, they both have ABS. So I can tune the ABS to feel exactly like the real car. When I jump out of this rig into my race car, the brake experience, the braking experience is identical. So it's so important for me that, and I'm so thankful that these pedals are available on the market. I know they're so expensive, but they are literally worth every penny if you're in a position like me and you use this for your job to prepare for it. This is the same D-Box motion platform I took off my old rig. It was perfect. I didn't need to change it or didn't find the need to change it. It has one and a half inches of travel. This is the Gen 5 4250i system. The one and a half inch of travel is perfect. You don't need the thing to move all over the place. That's when... Oh my God, these Schläuche are einfach, I sag's wie es ist, der absolute Tod. Das ist der Tod, wenn du mal was wechseln musst. Die Schläuche sind schön, ne? diese Kabelschläuche. Die sind echt schön und die machen echt was her, aber wartungstechnisch absoluter Abfuck. When you get disoriented, that little bit of motion and the vibration that this system offers is what is so impressive to me and what makes me feel connected with the sim as if I'm driving my real race car. I swear by this now. Again, this is something that's probably not the first thing you're going to upgrade. But in my position, using this as a training tool for real life racing, I can't stress how valuable and important this system is and how it makes me feel and prepare for my races. That's schon wirklich sehr, sehr schön for the seat, I am using the Sparkle QRTR. It's a great seat, it's lasted me five years, it's really comfortable. You gotta pick a seat that's comfortable for you. You're sitting in this thing for a long time in sim racing. I even customized it, but before you guys roast me, I gotta redo this, okay? The stickers are absolutely atrocious. The, the bubbles <laughs> there, it's unacceptable. So um, yeah, I know. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'm gonna try to fix that. We'll fix it together. Okay, it's called Neuer Sitz. I'm using the same steering wheel that I've used in the past. This is the Precision Sim Engineering LMX wheel. It's their flagship wheel. It does everything I need it to do and more. 
There's six paddles in the back. There's, I mean, a plethora of buttons. That's right, I said plethora. I have all the rotary knobs I want. I can go through the menu. I can change anything I want on the car. The buttons are backlit. The screen's gorgeous. Literally the perfect wheel for sim racing. It does everything you need it to do. Grips are great. The diameter is nice, 300 millimeter across the wheel. I mean, I swear by this wheel. I love it. I've been using it for the past couple of years now. And this one's brand new. It even has plastic film still on it. I saw for home. For my monitor setup, I'm using a triple screen setup with a fourth monitor overhead. They're, um, they're actually 1080p monitors from AOC. It's, I believe, the C32G1. They're old monitors. They're a few years old now. They're not the best. I'm definitely due for an upgrade, but they are 32 inch. They have 144 Hertz refresh rate, one millisecond response time. They're all right. I know I need to change them uh, to basically balance it out with this beautiful setup with the rest of the stuff. But 1080 does the trick for me right now. I mean, it's, it's fine, but to kind of blend the whole thing together, I'm using the uh, Asus ROG bezel free kit. That's kind of been a game changer for me. Getting rid of the, the bezels in between the triple screen setups kind of cool. And um, I know these don't really fit 32 inch monitors. They're meant for 27 inch. I got creative. I put some double sided tape on the back of them, stuck them to the screen. Do it at your own risk. I mean, I stuck mine to the screen. They seem to be fine. There's no residue if I pull them off, but um, it really does blend and make that, that experience a lot more seamless. So I really enjoy it. The, uh, the fourth monitor overhead is nothing special. I mean, I guess it is, depending on your setup. You're probably going to judge me for saying that now. But it's a 34 inches, 75 hertz. It's a ultra wide, not a super ultra wide, but I just picked an ultra wide. It was cheap at the time, and uh, it does the trick. I have all the information, my streaming information above, and everything I really need while I'm driving. Ja, gut, mit 1080p kannst du auch von einer Schüssel streamen. Das geht ja. <coughs> I have five streaming cameras on this setup for when I live stream on Twitch. This is camera one. This is camera two. This is camera three. This is camera four. This is camera five. For my main shot, I'm using a small clamp arm attached to my monitor stand. Gets me my main angle. For the secondary shot, camera two, I have it on this uh, flex arm. And the flex arm is attached to like some sort of jerry-rig mounting solution. Sieht wie bei mir aus. It's on the base of my monitor stand using an extra piece of extruded aluminum and a piece of steel from an integrated monitor stand in the past. I basically just mounted it all together and I get this really nice close side angle. For camera three, for my overhead shot, this is the one I probably get the most questions about how I actually have it mounted because I don't have tripods. It's all attached to my, my actual monitor stand. I use extra pieces of extruded aluminum. I have an Elgato flex arm that uh, basically has a ball joint and I get the uh, the extra camera out here over my head. I try not to get my hair in the shot, but... I was yesterday looking at your hair in the shot. That's what I have also looked at him. That's really very clever. That's all freestanding and not in the way at all. The only thing that sucks is sometimes I get out of the ring and smash my head off of it. So that's not great. Yeah. For my pedal cam, fourth camera, Again, I have it mounted to my monitor stand. Everything's pretty much contained to the monitor stand in terms of my mounting solutions. And for the final shot, it's on a slider, a motorized slider. That's in the back of my room uh, over here. We're gonna move this light out of the way. Just over here, um, I have a long HDMI cable that runs around into my main PC, which that thing's unchanged. If you've seen my other setup video, you'll know that it's pretty much a beast already, so I didn't need to change this thing out. Going through all my accessories, I have a ton of them on the rig. Let's just go through them rapid fire style. Starting with the Precision Sim Engineering PSP, incredible button box. He's mega Backlit, guy. has basically preset automations. You can click buttons. The thing goes crazy. It does everything you need it to do. That's it's so your, bad, I think. your sim racing companion by your side. Takes care of you. To control the stream, I'm using two Stream Decks. I have a Stream Deck XL and a Stream Deck Plus. One controls the audio and lights, and the other one controls all the animations, all the uh, camera angles. 
I'm using Simcor accessories for my steering shaft and my pedal plates. Those are actually customized with a Moradness emblem on the brake. I also have a Wave XLR for the microphone and for my headphones. My headphones are Bose SoundSport. I really love those SoundSport headphones. They're discontinued, but the gel. Oh, davon habe ich auch noch zwei Paar. Die sind äh, wirklich sehr, sehr gut. Und ich ärgere mich immer noch, dass man sie nicht kaufen kann. Your cap fits so nicely in my ear, especially with motion. Ich finde es interessant, dass er immer noch die ganzen Standardobjektive überall drauf hat, so wie das aussieht. I um, never find that my my earbuds fall out of my ears. For my microphone, I'm using a Rode NTG5. It's a shotgun mic. I find it great because when I'm sim racing and with the motion, I don't actually have the microphone hitting me in the mouth every two seconds, so it's great and it picks up the audio from a, a good distance away. Finally, for my lights. I'm using Elgato key lights. I use one as a main key light and one for illuminating the pedals. What really wraps this whole thing up, no pun intended, is the cable management job. I've been roasted for this in comments before. Somebody said that I definitely didn't do this. I didn't build this setup. You're right. I didn't build this setup. I could, doesn't mean I can't do it. Cable management job is literally pristine. There's not a cable in sight and That makes me feel so good inside. Das äh, waren Profis. Das waren definitiv Profis. Now that we've made it to the end of the tour, I have a little contest for you guys. For those who have made it to this point, I want you to guess. If you were to look at this rig and just guess how much everything costs, including the cameras, the lights, the audio, the rig itself, everything included, Computer has a 4090 and a, a 13.9. Okay, also Computer auch. Ich würde mal so um die 30k sagen. 100k. So it's it's jacked up. Like it's the maximum you can get. Guess how much this entire setup costs, and the person who's closest will win a free pair of Boratus gloves. I'm gonna actually just limit this contest for the first week. So after seven days, I'll pick a winner. Whoever's closest is gonna win a free pair of Boratus gloves of your choice. Uh, and that's it. Die Pedale sind nicht mal das Teuerste. Die Frage ist, wie viel er davon durch Sponsoren bekommen hat. Warum ist das von Relevanz? Also, warum ist das von Relevanz, ob das von Sponsoren kommt oder nicht? If you want to see me drive the rig live, you can follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Daniel Morad. You can also like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, guys, it's time to fix this terrible sticker job on the seat. Na, weil er dann ja kein Geld dafür ausgegeben hat. Ja, <lacht> trotzdem kann das ja, äh, die, die Frage war ja, wie viel das kostet. Da steht ja nicht, wie viel er dafür ausgegeben hat. Er fragt ja nach dem Preis insgesamt, nicht, was er dafür bezahlt hat. Schönes Video, schönes Rick. Also das ist wirklich super clean. Das ist wirklich mega, mega clean. Das ist, äh, ne? Das ist, äh, sehr, sehr clean. So clean bist du nicht. Also nicht ganz, nicht mal ansatzweise, nicht mal ein bisschen. Nee, dafür hängt einfach zu viel auch an diesem Rick dran, also noch mehr als bei ihm. Nee, noch nicht ganz. Kommt noch. Clean ist es schon, aber nicht ganz so clean. <lacht>